Learn about healthy eating and good nutrition from one of the dietitians from the Anne Arundel Medical Center, next on Food for Thought. Hi, I'm Jody Rissi, the host for Food for Thought, and thanks for watching. Today I'm joined by Ann Caldwell, one of the registered dietitians from the Anne Arundel Medical Center. We're going to talk a lot about good nutrition and being healthy in our communities, schools, and in the hospital. Welcome, Ann, to Food for Thought. Thanks for having me, Jody. It's a thrill to be here. Thank you. Can you t uh, share a little bit with the viewers a little bit about yourself sure. and um, your role and your responsibilities at the Anne Arundel Medical Center? Sure. Um, I am a registered dietitian, so I'm all about nutrition. Um, and I love working at the Anne Arundel Medical Center. I've been there for over 20 years. Um, I work in the community health and wellness arena there. Um, so much of what I do is really, whether I'm working with individuals or groups, um, helping people make better choices around the foods that they eat. Um, the department that I work in is really focused on helping to keep people healthier out in our communities. Very often people think about hospitals when they're sick. Our focus really is to say, how can we help you improve your own health status so you don't visit us within our walls, that you're staying out in the community, enjoying life. And I think that's how our paths often cross. Most definitely. Right? So we often talk about um, what's the hottest topic or what's the trend, right? And right. I think being old school registered dietitians, or I guess even the new school registered sure. dietitians, we all have the same message. But you know, thinking of you know your role at the hospital, what are some of the questions that you you know most often are asked? And um, and especially, you know, with nutrition, and then how does that tie in with the community? Because I think a lot of the same things are also being filtered into the schoolhouses as well. Most definitely. You know, I think, you know, one of the really great things about being a dietitian is that nutrition is a young science, and it's always changing. And so it really behooves us to stay on top of what the latest research is. And as, you know, a dietitian, our role really is to say, let's take what we know is science-based and help people apply it to their day and their lives every day so that the choices that we make, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, snacks for ourselves and for our children, are really based on things that are going to drive our health in the right direction, provide us that energy that we need. So at the hospital, that's the dietitians that work inpatient are worried about how can we best fuel our patients. Um, as dietitians who work out in the community, it's the same. We're always looking to, for ways to help people make better choices. Um, hot topics, you know, right now I think the most important thing that we share with folks, regardless of where they are, is to try to make half of what their plate is a fruit or a vegetable. Right. Um, and I think that that's a just, long way. it's something that we talk about so often, and we talked a little bit before the show even, is you know, in a 2007, we really started to encourage that and just saying, you know, we always had fruits and vegetables and we think um, parents maybe are sharing fruits and vegetables, but are they really doing enough, right? right? And are right. they really doing the variety that they need to and the different colors that they need to? Sure. And, and that role modeling is so important as parents, all of us really. You know, our decisions about what we eat don't happen at 2 o'clock in the afternoon in front of a cabinet or at 10 o'clock at night in front of a refrigerator. They happen at our grocery store. So we need to be smart consumers. And we can teach our kids to be that way as well. When they walk through that cafeteria line and they're choosing those great foods that are there for them, that balanced meal, a low Loading up on that fruit and vegetable so it's 50% mm -hmm. of their, their plate. Regardless of where you are, you can make those choices. And don't you believe, um, I definitely do as a registered dietitian and as a mom, I mean both of us having the two right. similar roles, you know, what we do at home and how we eat it at home, how we eat together as a family um, when we're home, um, we're really instilling that uh, that belief of good nutrition and all foods fit and in the por right portion size. Most definitely. Um, nope. No separate meals go on in our house. And I'm sure, did they go on in your house? Not at all. I'm always saying to families, don't be short order cooks. You know, mm -hmm. what we make for dinner really should feed be good for the entire family. And I think that message for our children that all foods fit, actually at all ages, is really important. I, I like to put foods into two groups. I always say if 90% of the time we're eating foods that fit into those five food groups, and 10% of the time we're having fun food, we're still gonna be able to drive our health in the right direction. So, you know, sending that message that food is fuel. Um, what we put in is really going to drive how well we perform in terms of thinking, our mood, and our energy. Um, and that goes a long way for all of us, regardless of our age. Right. And I think we talked about it a little bit before. It's your skin. It's your hair. Right. I mean, it's just 
how we fuel our bodies are exactly what we get yeah. at the end of the day and what the output is. I know in education, we always tie it to the um, academic achievement of our students. If they're hungry, they're not going to learn. Right. If they haven't had a meal since the lunch the day before, they're not going to. Or they're going to want to go see the nurse because they're going to say they have an upset stomach exactly. or a sit stomach. Yeah. Or we really are what we eat and what we breathe and what we put into our bodies. And so, you know, I always, the analogy of you wouldn't, you know, try to run your car without gas is really true for our bodies as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't matter, you know, where you are and what you're trying to do. We know that we think better. Kids' test scores are better. We know that people are more productive on the job mid-morning and mid-afternoon if they've eaten a breakfast and they've had a lunch. Mm -hmm. um, and we also know that if we're fueling ourselves throughout the day, the chances of us making better choices later in the day um, is really enhanced. People who skip a meal or, or skimp on a meal, 68% of the time are going to eat um, overeat after 5 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So fueling ourselves consistently through the day when we're asking our bodies to do work for us, to think on the job, to be productive, to play well at sports, um, really requires that adequate fuel throughout the day. It's funny that you threw in the play piece because I love it, you know, both of us having, again, children that are active or years were active right. in sports and still are. Right. Um, it's funny, when we do summer meals, um, we know that there, there might be children in our communities that aren't having food readily available and fresh fruits and vegetables, things like that. And not only in the summer, we want them fueled so they can still be reading and they can still um, be ready to come back to achieve in school, but they need to be fueled for playing. They really do, and, and that summer that summer food program is such an important one. I think I mentioned to you earlier that um, when we go out into the community, uh, the hospital now is really trying to take health out into the community, whether it's at health fairs, through churches, through partnering with the school, through partnering with the health department. Our message really is the same, and we used to look at giveaways, pens and pencils, and now our message really is let's really promote health through nutrition. Mm -hmm. And so when we go out to a church or to a community center, I'm taking cases of plums and cases of apples and cases of oranges just to make that point that says, you know, take a look at what you're doing and take the high road. And how do you see the, the students or the adults or whomever your target audience is, how are they doing with the fruits and vegetables? Because I think it's such a mixed message out there. I hear often, oh, kids don't eat fruits and vegetables right. and they're not going to like that. I think, you know, that's, that really is... Um, uh, what's, what am I trying to say? Uh, that just isn't quite fact. Mm -hmm. We know when we're presented with fruits and vegetables that kids very often take them. Um, we had children lining up to get fresh plums this this summer on a hot day um, and really focusing on water and hydration and giving kids water bottles as well. So important. You know, I actually do a, a display where we show kids how much sugar is in a, a soda or a Gatorade or a water and they make the choice. Kids mm -hmm. are smart as we all are. And um, I think that visual is really a good one because I know the Department of Health, we often use their Think Your Drink right. um, kit too for when we do our education right. pieces with right. students and if they see how much sugar is really in one of those Gatorades and unfortunately they're drinking it right at a young age or soda right, right. Um, exactly those simple sugars have really crept into our diets and mm -hmm. um, we know that we you know they really can run some issues with health yeah so I think hydrating um, without that extra sugar is really important it's a good message we do have water available in all the schools and we also sell water so we sell bottled water and a question that we're often asked is well why can't you do water as part of the meal pattern and we can't so we still believe milk is so valuable. Most um, definitely. I'm the nutrients, it's such a nutrient-dense food or right. beverage. Um, it's packed full. It's great for them. If they drink it, we love that. So USDA is really the one behind that saying you can't substitute water Absolutely for milk. Not. And you can. Water's really, really important. It is. But it's not a substitute no, for milk. No, it's not a food. It's mm -hmm. a hydrator. And so, Correct. you know, those dairy foods rich in calcium and protein are so important mm -hmm. for young growing bodies, for all of us, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. It's good food. And I know we'll talk about it in a little bit, but we'll talk about the flavored milk because I think it's always a hot topic for us here. Right. But let's talk a little bit more in the hospital. Um, you know, as a registered dietitian, and I think for somebody watching, they'll say, well, registered dietitians, you know, why would I be a registered dietitian? And then right. you're the community. Right. But what are the other roles of the registered dietitians sure. in the hospital? We have a variety of roles and you know we're all schooled in that um, food and nutrition and clinical end of things but we really do do a variety of jobs in the hospital. We have our clinical dietitians who are really focused on seeing those patients so folks that are in the hospital for three to five days that might be on special diets um, those are the dietitians that are meeting with them. Our director of food and nutrition at the hospital Mary Ellen Tuma is a registered dietitian and so she's involved with menu planning and running the 
the, uh, the hospital's food service department. Then we have dietitians that specialize at the D. Caceres Cancer Center and that are working with folks that are battling cancer and undergoing treatment. We have a dietitian who's in our diabetes center who's really working with folks that are battling that, as well as our weight management and bariatric center. So we have a, a lot of dietitians doing a lot of really good work. And, and very specialized, right? In some very of those cases, I mean, I think they still, like you and I, see the whole picture that all foods fit in and really looking at that variety and that portion sizes, but being specialized when it is to a certain um, chronic disease. Needed, right? most definitely. Um, um, although, you know, we're all doing the same thing. The focus really is how can we help people take a look at their individual needs and optimize their nutritional health. The community health and wellness department that I work in, not only do I see um, people individually, but we also run classes. We do group classes, a Mayo Clinic class that's really I co-do with um, one of the cardiovascular uh, um, exercise physiologists so that we're looking at people and encouraging them to not just eat well but also play hard and how can you do both of those to to drive your health in the right direction. Hmm. How are so. the um, the classes at the hospital? So um, are you instrumental and I think you would be just being you know you have such a pulse on our community and Anne Arundel um, how, how are they, you know, the new nutrition classes determined? And I know... Sure. We do a lot of planning when we sit down as a group and, and plan. Um, we have a, uh, a person at the hospital who's in charge of our energized department. Her name is Abigail Nelson, and that falls in the par view of the community health and wellness as well. So we are always sitting down and brainstorming. We, are, we run yoga classes now and, and tai chi classes and uh, fit classes as well as healthy eating classes. Um, we do a lot of, through women's education and the mother -based baby classes, mm -hmm. um, people that are thinking about having children come and hear about prenatal nutrition and what to expect when you're expecting. Um, our website, www.aahs.org, um, really can provide you with a link to a variety of classes. Um, the other group in our department that I think really helps with health promotion is our Ask a Nurse line. Um, it's a 1-800 number where people can call and get advice on a variety of issues any time of the day or night yeah. um, so that we really are trying to keep people healthy in their own homes through how they eat and what they do uh, fitness-wise. Yeah, it's, um, it's amazing, I think, working in a hospital many, many years ago before I came to the county. Um, the focus really is to keep you know, the communities at large healthy, right? It, and, it really and keep is. Them, keep them safe, keep them sound, keep them home, keep them not in the hospital. Right. And I think in our role, it's perfect because I think you're educating the community and we're able to educate our children right when they're coming in the doors. That's so true. Um, we work hand in hand quite mm -hmm. nicely. And that really is, you know, things have really changed. The hospital's mission really is trying to improve the health status of our community out in the community, away from those four walls, so that we are taking our health messages and our, our physicians and nurses out into the communities to do that work to keep people in their homes um, and, and keep our kids healthy. And I'm sure it's so interesting for you because I'm sure you just see, you know, all different families, right? I, I mean, do. And that's different ages and... That's what I love most about my job. I, I always joke I never know who's walking in the door on any given day. And so it's really fun to, to work with folks that are trying to, you know, gain some weight, folks that are trying to lose a little weight, folks that are battling a whole myriad of, you know, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, diabetes. We see it all. And it's so fun um, to really encourage people to make the better choices. You know, mm -hmm. I always say we have to be able to leave at the door what we have no control over, the fact that we're getting older, um, the fact that we've got some genes from our mom mom and dad, but what we really do have control over is what we eat and what we drink every day and what we do with this great body of ours. And that's a message that is as important for our children as it is for our grandparents. And mm -hmm. so regardless of, of, what, uh, of what stage of life you're living in, um, we have programs for you that can help you enhance that. That's fantastic. And I just love that it is the whole lifespan. I mean, it's really from birth. Right. Um, like right we said, on through. Or right on through in, until the elderly years and right. really um, showcasing and focusing on the health and the well-being of the community I think is so important. Oh, um, yes. We love partnering with you on all of the initiatives that you do and I just think working hand in hand the messages are consistent which I think is important for our community. It, it is really because as we've said there's a lot of misinformation out there and as long as we can be singing that same song that is good research based we're going to help people make the right choices day in and day out. I agree. Well, We're going to take a break and then when we come back we'll talk a little bit more about the school meals so the viewers can um, I guess hear from another dietitian what the school meals look like. Great. Don't go away. We'll be right back with Ann Caldwell from the Anne Arundel Medical Center, and we're going to talk about school nutrition.
Hi, I'm Wiley Baker. Sports abound here in Anne Arundel County. Join me for another edition of Athletes in Action later today, right here on AACPS TV. Hi, I'm Jeannie Porter. Anne Arundel County Public Schools Department of Transportation is raising the level of awareness for the safety of your children as we transport them to and from school. When a school bus stops to load students, as a driver, this is what you will see. At 150 feet, the bus will activate hazard lights. At 100 feet, the bus driver will activate the amber lights. They will start slowing down. At 10 feet before the bus stops, they will turn on the red bus lights. Their stop sign will come out and students will begin to load. Once all students are on board safely, the bus driver will turn off red lights and move forward. At this time, it is safe for the motorist to resume movement. Welcome back and thanks for staying tuned to Food for Thought. My guest is Ann Caldwell, a registered dietitian from Anne Arundel Medical Center. And we talked so much in the first segment um, about the hospital, but I think we left off a few um, initiatives that the hospital is still involved in and something that um, is near and dear to our heart here in this school district sure. of Anne Arundel County. in terms of food insecurity. Correct. You know, um, with our mission to be out there to help improve that health status of the entire community, we're always looking for pockets of areas that um, might need a little bit more help than what we normally think about. So for National Nutrition Month, for example, the hospital partnered with Anne Arundel County's Food Bank, and we had a huge drive where um, our, our over 4,000 employees brought in food so we could kind of fill the coffers of that, that food bank so that we know the folks that are living in uh, food insecurity uh, within the county are going to be better served. Um, and it's something that we do here in the county. It so really we is. also do, it's, ours is called Harvest for the Hungry. So we do the same thing and we focus where students, um, I know in our household, we go and we shop according to what it's going to be. If it's, um, is it a mustard and ketchup day? Is it a whole grain day? And what do you, you know, bring into bring school? Bring into school. So we can do the same thing and we can give back that to the community. Great. I think as a family to do it, it's wonderful. It really um, is. To think that our whole school district does it and the hospital's not doing it. That just is a great message. Now, we also have been um, privy, both you and I, and it's really something that the Department of Health has put together. They did a map of Anne Arundel County. Yes. And this map, it's called a food environment map, and it's part of a community needs assessment that they did. And um, it highlights where um, maybe areas of need are both um, financially, right. but also for access for healthy food. Exactly. But not just, and not just for access for healthy food, but also access to medical care. And so Anne Arundel Medical Center is really going out of its way to try to um, take a look at places where people really need to be connected with physicians and healthcare providers. And so we are doing our best to place physician groups and healthcare providers in the communities um, so we can, you know, focus on keeping uh, folks at home healthy and they don't have to come into our, our walls. Um, and transportation, I think, has been one of the barriers that we both have heard. Most definitely. Um, you know, it's for us in the summer. So during the school year, we have access. Our, our students come to us, so we have busing, we have a great transportation right. division. Um, parents do also, you right. know, um, transport their kids to school. But what do you do in the summer when we don't have that transportation? What if they don't have transportation to a physician right. um, or to the That's hospital? Definitely. So um, it's interesting that I think both of our organizations are branching into the community and into the need. Um, of where we can best serve. We really are putting in clinics where where uh, folks need us on Forest Drive and our Morris Blum Center um, off of Clay Street so that folks can walk to that physician's office mm -hmm. um, really makes a big difference and really trying to keep people out of our emergency room. We're proud of our emergency room at Anne Arundel. We have a, a special pediatric emergency room um, that is very popular with those poor sick kids and families that are coming in but our goal really is to help people not come into our four walls. We're there if you need us. Us, but we're really hoping that you're doing your best to stay out. And so the, the classes that we provide and the education services that we're providing in the community, we're hoping are just going to help people stay healthy and in their own homes. See, and I think that's a great segue because I think that's the education that we do. And um, in Anne Arundel County Public Schools, uh, there's four registered dietitians, and I'm one of them. 
um, it's kind of nice to say that we educate and we serve education every day because not only do we serve them healthy meals and expose them to just so many fresh fruits and vegetables maybe that they don't see at home most definitely um, maybe not in a market even but if we can do as much as we can there and really um, engage our youth in the community have them enjoy the meals have them excited about the meals mm -hmm. And I know we talk a lot about it. Sometimes the, the funniest things that are on our menu, everybody says, oh, it's never going to work. They're not going to eat coleslaw. They're not going to eat Brussels sprouts. And lo and behold, they but do. They do. Mm -hmm. And the interesting about that is that they're the advocates in their own family. So mm -hmm. when their parents take them grocery shopping or they find themselves at a farmer's market on the weekend, they've experienced some of these things at school and may be more apt to say, wow, you know, let's have some sweet potatoes on the menu this week. Let's try some of that coleslaw that was mm -hmm. so tasty at school. And they can actually impart some of that information and drive it the other way. We always think of parents driving it down, but our children can be really great advocates too. Right, and I think we're, we're doing so much more of that in the county. So we do our Tasting of the Rainbow. Our farm to school program has really blossomed. I mean, we've always had it there. I just think we're partnering more and more with local farmers. And to be able to be on the farm and showcase the farmer. So, you know, I think our youth, is, you know, across the whole county, they have to know where their food comes Most from. Most definitely. It's, it's not the grocery store. It, it was grown, it was nurtured, right. um, it was loved, you know. It's, so it could be something that they can fuel their body with and right. be really ready to learn. That's great. And those farmer's markets are important, and it's a mm -hmm. great place to take those kids. The hospital actually has a farmer's market uh, come April right on our own campus so that our employees and their children can, can purchase foods there as well. It's great. So, again, just one more avenue, right, right. to one really have place. it out. Um, with our, our fruits and vegetables, and, you know, I'd love to just, because you've seen um, our meals, and Most I know definitely. you've been um, with me on many panels talking about it. Often, I think the viewers are not sure. They think school lunch might be, or school meals, what, you know, what, you know, they from remember 20, from the right, yeah, 20, 20 or 30 years ago. Years ago. Right. You probably got some green beans or right. corn. Um, right. It is not the case at all anymore. Not at all. And I think it's important that parents go in and take a look at those meals with, that mm -hmm. their kids are eating. I think they might be really pleasantly surprised um, and, to know that they are written by a registered dietitian, that kids are getting a third of their days, is that correct? Mm -hmm. A third of their yep. days nutritional needs met at school. Right, um, and that we look at all of it. And I, right. I think you know that. I mean, right. I still analyze the menu as one of the registered dietitians. Sure. We look at calories, we look at protein, we look at calcium, we look at, I mean, right. every vitamin. And we just want to make sure it's just so complete. And more importantly than not, I think we always look at the portion size. Yeah, very important. It's one thing to be well-fueled, mm -hmm. um, but it's another thing to be over-fueled. And so portions are not only important to make sure that you're actually getting a full serving of fruit and vegetable, but they're also important to make sure that you're not getting more of what you need. Back to that 90-10 rule, you know, food that is really fueling that great body is the food that should make up the majority of our plate. And then 10% of the time, we have time for that fun food. Mm -hmm. But we want to make sure that that portion of fun food is just that. And for that 90%, I think our school meals every time are there. Um, Most definitely. You know, for viewers watching, our whole grains, every grain that we offer is at least 51% whole grain rich. That is great. So it's the pizza crust, it's the tortilla shells, it's the bagels, it's a muffin, it's the breading on our chicken nuggets. So I often have parents say, I can't believe you still serve chicken nuggets. Right. And I said, well, we get to look at it. We know how much protein we right. do. It's made with whole muscle, so a whole muscle chicken. Right. And it's coated yeah. with a whole grain coating. It's hard for a family to pack a meal that can be as nutrient dense as what you're providing mm -hmm. at, the, at the school. So that's and just great. You're doing good work. Thank you. And having two children that eat it every day, I think that's a bonus because they come home and they really share you know, good stories and what they want to yeah. see something more of. Right, um, you've got a good critique going mm -hmm. on there right in your own home. And they often, um, I, you know, we talked about the Brussels sprouts before. Right. When we first did Brussels sprouts, everybody kind of, you know, they give you that look. Right. I don't think it's going to work. It's not going to fly. Uh -huh. And I always say, well, my girls eat it. And they're right. like, mm-hmm. And we tried it steamed. It was okay. You know, some students really liked it. And then others not at all. So <laughs> once we started roasting our vegetables, and we're roasting more that and more is vegetables. Great. Really popular. So now we roast butternut squash and acorn squash, uh, carrots, pumpkin. We did pumpkin for the first time. So it's really nice to be able to, um, you know, I think change the way our, our students are eating because we definitely. know it's changing the way the whole family's eating. Most definitely. And, you know, I always say to young kids, all of us, you know, especially for those young ages, taste buds are always changing. And just because somebody didn't like it when they were in the third grade doesn't mean that they're not going to like it in the fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And so it's an important message that families, I think, need to encourage their kids. Try it. You know, give it a taste. Do that three-bite roll. It takes about seven to nine times for someone to really 
mm. accept that taste mm -hmm. when they're when they're first uh, given something brand new to try. So I think the schools do a good job of that. Thank you. Now you've talked about something else too, mouthfeel. Mouth feel. Right. So we're talking taste, and we think the taste is always so important. So right. when we try a new item. Um, obviously, we look at it first, so the dietitians in the office look at it. Um, we look at it nutritionally, and then we look at cost because we still lunch is very economical. Sure. It's um, under three dollars, so it's a, a very That's a buy. it's a great price for a great lunch. <laughs> but once we look at that, we always taste it with children, and we have our students be our taste testers because if they right. don't eat it, it doesn't matter how nutrient packed it is. Exactly. If they don't eat it, so we really look for that balance. It has to taste good, but that mouth feels important. And I know you talked about that a little bit. Yeah, um, it's really important, and it really does change as we age. I mean, that's something that registered dietitians are always working with folks, regardless of that that age. You know, our, our taste buds change, our sensitivity to different flavors change, and so it's important that we're always experiencing uh, different flavors and different textures. Mm -hmm. um, especially when children are young, it's really important to introduce them to a variety of foods with a variety of flavors and a variety of textures so that they don't turn into adult picky eaters who might not be meeting their nutritional needs. Right. So at every stage of life, we, we, need to, we need to look at that. And I like, I think your message has often been too, it's just those little bites of it or the little tries of it. Um, when we have students come through, if we have 10 fresh fruits and vegetables out there, they could take a little bit of every one. So when we look at portion sizes, it doesn't mean you have to have a half a cup of that one item. Sure. You can have small portions of multiple oh. items and have the multiple colors. Um, I know when we do our school meals, we look, uh, we always have a legume, you know, we always have an orange or a, a red vegetable, there's the dark green leafy, so we do kale, we do broccoli, we do spinach. Outstanding. Um, so it's really nice to be able to have the colors of the rainbow sure. or the tasting of the rainbow yeah. as we call it. Yeah. Um, and encourage them just to try that one bite. Try one grape try tomato. One bite. Exactly. Because we know, you know, so much of nutrition science now is looking at is it looking at inflammation in the body with regard to disease states. And we know that people that are eating five, seven servings of fruits and vegetables a day are really going to help improve health status and also reduce risks for cancer, cardiovascular disease. Um, and so starting at a young age to make friends with those fruits and vegetables really promotes lifelong health. And it's funny because I think in your role at the hospital, because I started in a hospital over 20 years ago, and you need a little bit longer now. Um, <laughs> we won't I, talk about that. Right. I loved being in the hospital, but I love this role because we do start early. And I love that we can partner now with you know someone like yourself who you do see sure. children younger. Right. Um, the WIC office, the Head Starts, you right. know, I mean, just everybody that's out there with all the same message. Um, we know we really are going to have a healthy Anne Arundel at the end of the day. That's our goal, working together to, to prove the, improve the health of our, our community. I agree. We only have um, a few minutes left. Okay. Is there anything else that a viewer, you know, in regards to Anne Arundel Medical Center, I know you mentioned the website, but the programs are there. They Correct. are. You know, I, I, I would just really encourage people to come and look at our, our website. Um, there is so much there that we have to offer the community in terms of health promotion programs. Um, you can go online to um, find a doctor in your neighborhood who meets the needs that you and your family are looking for right on the, on the website. Um, and everything else that is offered at the hospital, whether it's our, our cancer center or whether it's our women's and children programming, um, we are there to, to help you drive your health in the right direction. Yeah, there's so much that's there. Um, we can't say enough uh, thank yous for the great partnership that we have um, working with you, um, working with other you know divisions at the hospital. It really, um, I think it's a, a definitely coordinated effort to make sure we definitely have a healthy community at the end of the day. So thank you. We share that goal. Thank you as well. As you can see, a registered dietitian is truly the nutrition expert in the hospital as well as in schools. Anne Arundel Medical Center and Anne Arundel County Public Schools constantly look to make sure we have healthy students, healthy schools, and together we really feel we're cultivating communities of wellness. If you have any question about the School Meals Program, you can call me at any time at 410-222-5900. Make sure you fill half of your plate with fruits and vegetables just like we discussed today. And stay tuned. Tune in the next time for the next Food for Thought. I'm Corporal Gamble with the Anne Arundel County Police. In regards to school safety and security, violence is not tolerated in schools. If you're having an issue with another student, 
I implore you to come down and speak to administrators and responsible adults and give them the opportunity to hash out your differences safely. Because if you don't, you could be placed under arrest and you could be riding with me to the station.